hello everyone welcome back to the next video in this video i will show you how to upload as well as read image from google drive in native android application with credential manager uh, obviously we will be using kotlin so let's get started so here you can see firstly i have uh, went to google drive uh, sorry google cloud console because we need to create a project over here also if i show you my google drive there are no documents as such so it is uh, at the very start empty uh, obviously we, i will be uploading it via native android application so firstly we'll have to create a project so you can just click over here and new project and just name it whatever you feel i'll just keep it as default then again this will take little bit of time to create the project so uh, be little patient so here you can see it is creating a project for me once the project is created just click on select project and here you should see your project name then click on api and services and just click on enable api and services so you will come over here i'll just close this click on uh, credentials uh, click on create credentials oauth client id now uh, before i show you this inside android should you have just created a default android project using xml layout MT views project but you can use jetpack compose as well if you want to and here inside vs code i have just opened one uh, practice project of mine so i was practicing before recording this video because i will be copying a lot of code from this particular uh, vs code uh, folder so don't get confused again coming back to our oauth cloud console so here i'll just click on configure consent screen and once okay here we'll then click on external click on create i'll give my app name as my app change to whatever you feel like support email is i will enter my email address now if you are deploying it to google play store you will have to upload your app logo as well and if you have some app domain or privacy policy and terms of service link make sure you add all those stuff then here for email address i will just enter this one uh, for support details okay uh, and i'll click on save and continue uh, okay again we'll have to click on save and continue now here is the interesting part we will be using credential manager right so <clears throat> uh, i have already made a video about credential manager previously if you uh, go through that video we did not need to add any touch test user but here uh, given that we will be uploading and reading file from uh, google drive and i have not deployed my app to google play store i need to add test users over here so otherwise this will not work for you this is an important step click on add user here you can enter whatever email id you want like only a gmail id as long as uh, that uh, that is the uh, gmail id from which you will be testing from your a native android application so i will be entering this because i will be using this i'll click on add again and here you can see it has added you can add multiple users as well but i'll keep it just one for now i'll click on save and continue again you don't need to add this test users if you are deploying it to google play store but yeah there are some other steps like i told you right you uh, you need to uh, take while deploying it to google play store i'll again go back to click on back to dashboard and here you can see this publish app when you are test uh, deploying it to google play store you will have to do uh, whatever is mentioned inside this publish app section i'm not going to do that then here you can click on credentials click on create credentials again oauth client id here you can select android and here we have to enter our package name so i'll just go to my android app go to build.gradle.scripts and here i will just copy my package name okay and i will paste it over uh, here then we require the sha1 certificate now there are different ways of getting the sha1 certificate i think the easiest way according to me is just by running this particular command but oh sorry this particular command but uh, i think if you are already created a release apk it's better to use this particular command change the values like the this should be your release key store this should be your release alias name uh, this store password and key password okay but i think for debug uh, this is fine uh, this is quickest so i'll just open my terminal and i'll just uh, enter our command and i'll click run over click enter and this will give me the sha1 certificate so if i just scroll up here you can see now the first the last is, is the for debug android test sometimes that sha1 is different from your uh, debug key so don't get confused we want the debug one if you have already created a release apk maybe you can choose the release uh, one 
but yeah for i have not created that so i'll just uh, choose the sha one for debug one i'll paste it over here and here you can see it, they have also given this command but anyways i'll click on create sometimes why i don't use that particular this particular command for debug is uh, i have faced lot of issues regarding sha one uh, that's why at least for debug apk where uh, i haven't uh, generated the debug key store the debug key name sometimes it picks the wrong debug apk because i have react native flutter that to install uh, that's why i just run this particular command for debug uh, one uh, that i have noticed that this works fine for me most of the times then we don't require the client id for android uh, even for native android we require the client uh, web client id but yeah we need to create this android client id then again i'll click on create credentials oauth client id again and here you will have to select web application and just click on create again now here we will copy this client id so i'll just uh, just add it over inside my android application okay and also here i will update it to 35 uh, because i think uh, that is the version uh, latest version for android uh, so i'll just uh, okay what is it telling i know what i'm doing uh, where is it that i used to get some uh, i don't know i'll just click on sync now uh, i don't know why this is showing error but i think it, it is an android studio bug because i have downloaded the hdk 35 as well okay so this is done also uh, just for safety sake i'll i create a api key as well we are not really using it uh, but yeah i don't want any unnecessary issues that's why i just create this api key we won't be using it then you will have to click on enable api and services click on enable api and services here you will just search for google drive i'll click on enter and then click on google drive api and we have to enable this so yeah this will get enabled soon uh, but here we coming back to our uh, thing and i used to get an uh, i don't know okay yeah i'm know what i'm doing man <laughs> why does it keep us uh, anyways i'll just uh, use that particular thing suppress no inspection i don't want any inspection yeah, okay anyways so here you can see this api is also enabled now i will just copy this code from my documentation and i'll explain it to you as much as i can so firstly we'll have to copy this particular dependencies so i'll just copy it go to build.gradle.kts and here i'll paste it so the first uh, four dependencies which you see are for credential manager and the last uh, three dependencies which you see are for google drive now uh, whenever you are watching this video make sure you go to this particular uh, url as well as this one to check whatever is the latest version of google drive apis for this as well as for this and i'm using the latest one at the time of me recording this video and the version number are written inside libs.versions.toml because that is the new thing in android so i'll just update this as well and for version number i'll go to gradle libs.versions.toml here you can see i have to copy these two things so i'll just move it over here so that i know what i'm missing i'll paste it over here okay i'll also do this okay and i'll minimize this so i have this i have this i have this i have now i will add this credentials as well and i'll add this. some of you might be com confused like why i'm using this data store preferences i don't uh, like there is uh, one thing which i still don't understand with credential manager is suppose i sign in for the very first time now the user closes the app without logging out how do i get the sign in credentials again once the user reopens the app i'm still confused on that that's why to store the email i'm using this data store preferences because that's what is needed for google drive to know the uh, email of the authenticated user uh, if you have a better solution do let me know in the comments so here you can see i'm just copying this as well i'll just show you the entire code in a bit i'm copying this okay and then i need uh, this as well this entire part so i'll copy this as well and i'll paste it over here okay so here you can see these are all the dependencies which i have added i, I will just click on sync now i'll simply scroll through this copy paste whatever is missing so i have added this too okay and i have also added uh, all this stuff so hopefully you got the point 
these are all the android dependency which i am downloading then i will uh, go to layout file res layout activity underscore i'll just copy everything this is pretty simple uh, i'll go to code and i'll paste it over here so i'll just show you the design as well so firstly we have a login button uh, the user needs to log in i have also given the logout button in case if you are curious and this button get permission to drive so we before uploading or reading file from google drive we need to get the permission so this is very important i have created a separate button for this but in case in your app if you just have upload and read every time you upload and read make sure you have the proper permission so you will have to run this particular code the click listener of this particular button okay if you don't have this particular button this is for uploading it to drive and this is for reading from drive and this is my image view so once i have uploaded the image once and if i try to read that image i want to display that image view inside over here so i just enter this okay my image view and i'll just add okay sorry just add it extract string resource okay so hopefully you got the point uh, next is where uh, important step is we have to go to android manifest make sure you add the internet permission as well so i'll just go to my project app manifest android manifest.xml make sure you add this now uh, we have to just go to our main activity and i'll copy everything for now uh, just bear with me and i'll explain you guys all the code okay i don't need this package name so firstly these are all the imports which i have so i'll simply scroll through all the imports you can copy paste all these imports which i have again uh, make sure you copy this imports because for some variables there are multiple imports and you might uh, include the wrong imports import so be careful with this again these are all the documentation url so if you want you can go through this documentation this is our preferences data store here i have created our google id option and these are all the uh, buttons and image view which i have created uh, then i have created this field id this field id is very important because once we upload an image uh, to google drive uh, we will get the field id now once we need to read that image from google drive uh, we need the field id as well that's why i have created this variable uh, there is another way of reading uh, files from google drive even though if you don't have field id i won't cover that in this particular video i'll cover that in some other video uh, but yeah for now if you want to upload the file which you have uploaded to google drive you can make use of this field id because that's the easiest one uh, this i will come back to later on this also i will come back to later on and inside on create we are just initializing our login button upload button read as well as image view here we create our credential manager here i am just checking whether the user has logged in or not this is my way of checking it i don't know how to do it via credential manager like the scenario which i explained when the user sign in closes the app and comes back i don't know a better way than this uh, and this is for logout again i'm not really using this but i have just shown it to you in case if you are curious this is our login so again i have created a separate video from credential manager i won't go into in depth for credential manager in this video here we just basically create this nonce which is kind of like a security thing make sure you always keep this as false this is our server client id which we need to enter so this is my server client id right i'll just copy it i'll scroll at the top uh, and i will paste it over here then auto and select enable is true announce uh, here we are passing then we are doing this get credential request and here we uh, get the credential using the credential manager and here I, we are calling this handle sign in which i will show you shortly this is the code which you need to call every time you update like try to upload or uh, read file from google drive so i have created a separate button for it just to avoid confusion so here is the authorization request code and we have to create this identity dot get authorization and here we create see this add success listener okay and uh, so if the user is doing for the very first time he will be he will be displayed a pop-up model uh, like this particular app is trying to access your google drive and the user will have to click on allow or deny if he has already given that permission then he won't see that particular pop-up model and you will come directly over here and then you can write the upload or read code 
uh, if it is for the very first time then we go to this authorization launcher which i will show you shortly and this is how i am handling the failure list now coming back to our authorization launcher i'll just scroll at the top so this is the code so here if it is for the very first time then we will come over here and here we know that the permission has been granted so again here you can call the upload and read code but this is only called for the very first time when the user uh, try to upload or read permi uh, read file from google drive but i have created again a separate button so be careful with this okay so now again uh, coming back to our code so this is upload button so here we are just uh, selecting an image so i have created this new photo picker launcher as well so if i just show it to you uh, here you can see once we have an image uri i just call this upload method which takes the image uri which i will show you shortly uh, okay again coming back to our code and here inside read button we just call the read method so here handle sign in again this is for credential manager sign in so we check what type of credential it is in our case it is custom credential so from that we get the google id token credential and then we get the id so here this id is actually the email and here you can see i'm sa saving it to our preferences data store uh, but there are other details as well in case if you are interested then this is for save data this is for get data as well and this is uri to file uh, so this is how we uh, once we get the, select an image we get the uri right so we need to convert it to file so this is the code for it again I have just copy pasted it from the documentation uh, so you maybe you can do the same thing uh, this is for getting the file extension depending on what type of image you have selected again this is I've just copied pasted it from stack overflow and this is for copying stream I think it is getting used over here again you can copy it and this is our upload method so once we have the upload method firstly we have to make uh, firstly you will if you again like i'm telling you you should first run the get permissions button code but i have a separate button for it that's why i have not written it over here so we are using this oot2 and here you can see we are getting the email from our preference data store and passing it over here then we convert our um, image uri to a proper file and then we uh, again this has been copied from docs uh, and then we get hold of our this uh, there is this drive file as well which is different from our java file and then we just create this file content and then we uh, just uh, ex uh, create that particular file and it will upload it for us once it has uploaded we will get the file id and i'm just displaying oh sorry and i'm just displaying that inside a toast message but you can handle it however you feel like and this is for exception and for reading again same thing we have to create this google account credential uh, get the email uh, set, set it to selected account set the drive builder again the same thing and here th this is different so we create a byte array output stream we pass the file id to it and then we convert once we have that file we convert it to a bitmap and we display it inside our image view and here you can see i have just created some uh, helper uh, variables inside our companion object so now what i will do is i'll quickly run the application hopefully it should work so i'll run the application again uh, what I want to tell you is uh, make sure you run it on a real device uh, because uh, on the emulator you might get some issues so yeah make sure you run it on real device okay guys so I was I faced this particular issue while running the application and for that what you will have to do is you will have to add this particular code inside your build.gradle.kts so I'll just close this I'll go to my build.gradle.kts I'll just scroll at the top and here you can add this particular code and just click on sync now again uh, and hopefully that should resolve our uh, issue and i will now run the application on my real device okay so here is my output running on a real device now the output is blurred because uh, when i click on login it will display a model pop-up with all my uh, gmail ids which i don't want to show it to you guys so i'll just click on login button and it will show me the pop-up so here you can see uh, again i'm uh, doing wi-fi debugging so the output might be little slow uh, but i will just select uh, the brave evidence uh, gmail id because that's what i have added it added it as a test email id and i'll just click on continue again and now i have uh, signed in as with uh, my brave evidence gmail id okay so the next thing is i just have to click on get permission to drive and uh, now my app is not published to google play store that's why 
uh, it is showing me this particular pop-up but this is fine i'll just click on continue once you have published your app to google play store and publish your app on google drive console as well you won't see this and here you can see the user for the very first time will see all this option and he just have to click on allow so the permission has been granted now i will just click on upload to drive button firstly it will show an image picker for me so this is the image i'll just select this particular image and it will automatically upload that image to google drive as well and again if you want to display a progress bar you can show that but here you can see the toast message along with the file id and if i just go to google drive and i will refresh it uh, you, we should so here you can see uh, this is the image uh, which was uh, which, which we just uploaded also if i now click on read from drive as well uh, it should uh, display so it has downloaded the image and displayed it inside my image view as well yeah that's it thank you for watching bye